So, let's go ahead and continue with our discussion of monopoly. And now I want to go ahead and talk about intellectual property. So, what we're talking about here is mainly copyrights and patents. Trademarks are also a type of intellectual property, but they're not that important to the concept of monopoly. So, these two types of intellectual property, copyrights and patents, serve to give a monopoly on either someone who's made a creative product something like a song, or a book, or a movie, or something like that, a work of art, a painting, or a more scientific, technological issue um, with patents. And so the person who invents, or writes, or creates this piece of intellectual property is the sole legal producer of the movie, or the widget, or whatever it is, for a certain period of years. So they have a monopoly. And essentially the idea here is there is some fixed cost to create intellectual works. And often the marginal cost per unit after that is relatively low. So we might look at something like how much does it cost to make one more copy of a song? Or how much does it cost to make one more copy of a pill? Those might be very low compared to the amount that it took to create the very first copy. So, you know, the first copy of a movie might cost $100 million to create. But after that, every DVD is like, you know, 50 cents or something. Or every time you download it, it's, you know, a buck of bandwidth or something like that. If this is true, what's going to happen is if we have this low constant marginal cost per unit, if we produce just one unit, we're going to have huge average costs because we're trying to spread those fixed costs over lots, over very few units. But as we produce more and more units, we're going to see that the average total cost is going to converge down to the marginal cost. So, there's actually a fair amount of controversy over intellectual property. Not necessarily the general concept of it, but exactly how strong these copyright and patents need to be, how long they should last, how narrow versus broad they should be, um, and there's a lot of fine details to this. But in general, this seems to be the most common way that different countries have found to find the balance between encouraging creativity and innovation but, because these things expire eventually, then we go ahead and are able to make them public domain eventually, and competition drives their price down to marginal cost.